Okay, um, well done, you guys have held on. I've shown you four methods, have you counted? One A, one B, one C, and then I just showed you a secondary method with this inscribed triangle. Here's my final one. In some ways, it's the worst solution um, because it's the longest and most awkward, but it's actually, it's, it's important to know that if you don't like any of this other reasoning and that kind of thing, um, there, is a re there is a way to bash your way through algebraically. It's just terrible, but I wanted to show it to you for completeness because some people really like the algebraic solution, okay? If you want to handle this by algebra and not touch a single um, a single thread of like geometric proof and like like maybe you didn't like that you're like I didn't know what the centroid was or how you find it um, this is the way to do it but as you're gonna see it's horribly inefficient geometric reasoning whilst it can be difficult to come up with it actually saves you time okay they're kind of every property is like a shortcut that you can use through the proof okay so Hold on to your hats, let's just uh, bash this out mercilessly. Are you ready? Let's let Z equal X plus I Y. So therefore I can say, well, I'm just gonna substitute that into the original um, equation they provided us, right? There was arg of Z minus two root three, arg of z minus 2i and when you take the difference that's equal to pi on 3. I've just written this on the left hand side because I'm not going to do any manipulation to it everything's going to be changing over here okay. Now think back when you um, when you multiply complex numbers together you um, multiply the moduli and you add the arguments right which means when you um, divide complex numbers you subtract arguments and that's what you've got here do you see you've got one argument and another and you're subtracting right so therefore if when you divide complex numbers you subtract arguments um, the converse is also true when you subtract arguments what you're really doing is dividing complex numbers um, this is one complex number and this is another one. So therefore what I'm going to do is take these two arguments and combine them into one. Uh, I'm going to combine them into an argument where I'm dividing uh, this one here and you can see I've just collected the real terms over here in x minus 2 root 3 um, and then you've got the i y hanging over there on the right and then in this um, complex number I've just um, collected those imaginary terms and then just factorized out the i. Okay, now as we've seen before, you look at this and you think, yuck, mainly it's yuck because the denominator is complex, right? So I need to realize the denominator here, but I'm really sorry, well not that sorry, this is why it, it wasn't one of the first four methods I showed you. When you realize the denominator of this, it's gonna be terrible because see what you gotta do, right? You gotta multiply by the complex conjugate of this denominator, which is x minus i y minus two, which is gonna become a dog's breakfast when you have a look at the top. So I'm just warning you in advance that this is gonna become messy, okay? This is what you get. When you're multiplying by x minus i y on two, this is how it all pans out. You can see I've just paired up my x terms and my, um, uh, and my i y minus two terms. Uh, I've shaded them blue and green just so you can follow along a little more easily. Watch out, there's actually a few minus signs in there that I've canceled just to make it briefer than, I mean it doesn't look brief at all but it's as brief as I can get it. Um, when you expand all of this out because what I need to do is um, isolate the real components and the imaginary components, it looks huh, even worse because you have to expand this um, pair of binomials in here but what it does allow you to do is successfully factorize i out and so there's a going to be a real component here and an imaginary component here and they're going to be things that I can separate out to then sort of crunch through my algebra okay so that's what I've done right here here is the imaginary component here's the sorry the real component here's the imaginary component after you can see the um, the xy terms here and here they're just going to cancel with each other which is nice so once you've got that you say, Mr. Wu, what do I do? Um, and I said that you didn't have to use any geometric reasoning before, but I, I told a, a sort of brief lie. Um, you can kind of define this geometrically, but it's easier to, for me to show to you what's going on here if I reason it geometrically. Um, if you think about a, a complex plane, right, and you place some arbitrary A plus IB onto here, right, where is the argument um, of A plus IB? And the answer is it sits in this right angle triangle here, right? Here's the argument uh, here. And so you can see if I've got A plus I B, then I've got this as A and this as B. So therefore, I've got this tan relationship here, right? I can say tan of theta, tan of that argument is going to be opposite on adjacent, which is B on A in this case, right? 
In this particular example, I don't have a nice neat A plus IB. This monstrosity here in purple is A. And this here in orange is B. They're my real and my imaginary components. So what I'm gonna do from this line to the next line is I'm gonna take advantage of tan, this relationship over here. Oops, it didn't mean to delete it. This relationship over here, I'm gonna take tan of both sides. And just be careful, I can do this because I've got, um, I've got everything in the first quadrant, so things are gonna be positive and all that kind of thing, okay? So on the left-hand side, tan of pi on three is equal to root three. We've seen this before. And on the right-hand side, this is the B on A that I was talking about. There's B and there's A. So just so you know where that's coming from, you can see this, um, coming, or this coming down to the numerator, okay? Uh, when I look at this, I think, gross, but I can work with it, right? For starters, there's so many surge flying around. Um, the thing that I think is probably most easiest is to get rid of as many root threes as possible. You can't get rid of all of them, but you can get rid of some of them. So I'm gonna divide through by root three. Um, these terms which had root threes in them before, they won't. Um, this one which didn't have one before, it will, um, but that's still gonna be okay for me. I'll, I'll get rid of it shortly. So I've divided through by root three, that gives me a one on the left-hand side. Uh, you can see what I did, was talking about on the numerator here, and now I'm ready to cross multiply. Um, you can see I can multiply that denominator over to the left-hand side, and mercifully, because it's equal to one, I don't have to do any like you know um, complicated expanding. So you can see over here on the left-hand side, that is the denominator you saw before, but I did do a couple of things in the background, right? Um, I rationalized this, um, this denominator here, so it's two root three on three, and while I was at it, I knew that this x term and this x term were gonna have to collect eventually. So you can see I also rationalized this one. This came from the two root three x term on the denominator, okay? So these guys are going to collect in a second. Um, you can also see I will have these um, y terms to collect. And uh, once you put them together, you're gonna subtract two y from both sides. You should land here, right? So what I've got here is all of the y squareds, the two y's, and that four fits nicely. I don't have to complete the square on this because this is a square. But what you get over here, because I'm heading towards a circle, right? This is going to need me to add something to both sides to complete the square. Um, and you can see here, I halve and square, right? This coefficient here. So you halve it, which gives you that. You square it, which gives you that right-hand side, which is the radius, okay? So from there, you can read off like the center and radius from the equation of that whole circle. Uh, what I did was, just going all the way back to the start, this, this equation here defined the entire um, subset of the complex plane we were on. So that's why when I got all the way through my horrendous algebra, I got the entire circle. Um, you do have to restrict it to say it's the major arc, but that's not something that the question asks us to do. Once you have the equation there, you just read off the radius and the center. So, how is your brain feeling? Has it absolutely turned to mush? Um, I do know there are other methods. In fact, I'm gonna really quickly, um, Zhao is not here in the room anymore, but I'm gonna really quickly show you um, the reasoning he showed me, I think. Uh, let me use this diagram because it's actually to scale, so that can be helpful. Um, and I see, Shub, you've put another one in there. Um, let me see, another method. Oh, okay, yeah, I see. So, yes, you are using, um, uh, you know, modulus notation there for z minus 2i and then saying, okay, I can solve them to get the, because you've got equal distances, you've got radii, that's fantastic. Let me show you Zhao's solution because it was quite nice as well. If you put in uh, these radii back here, um, we already know that this angle is pi on three from part one. We already reasoned through why this is two pi on three here um, because of the angle at the center being twice the angle at the circumference. So just store in your head that it's two pi on three. Because these are both radii here, I'm gonna delete this two pi on three just so that I can draw a new construction. So if I sort of bisect this two pi on three in here, okay? What that creates is a pi on three on this side and a pi on three on this side. And what you can reason here is, because you've got this radius here, this radius here, and the pi on threes over here, um, you can further reason that you're actually gonna create two congruent triangles here, right? Um, by dividing this uh, AB length into two, we already know it's equal to um, four. So when you divide it up into half, you get two on this side and two on this side. 
um, by showing that they're congruent, um, therefore these two angles on a straight line have to add up to pi. So therefore one of them is gonna be pi on two and the other one is gonna be pi on two. And from here, knowing that this is pi on three, you've got a little right angle triangle in here that you can just use right angle triangle trig. Uh, what do we got here? So sine of pi on three will be two on R. Sine of pi on three will be two on R. So therefore just rearranging, I get R is equal to two divided by sine pi on three, which is root three on two, which is the same thing we saw before. This is four, uh, root three on three once you rationalize. So you've got the radius and then you argue from there from two I horizontally across, that gives you your center. So you can see there's just, there you go, there's a sixth solution kind of, I think that's like solution 1D or something. So what's my point here uh, as we finish up and thank you for your patience. The reason why I showed you all these different methods is because I need you to exercise in your mind the ability to reason from many different angles, pardon the pun, right? Um, that's what's gonna help you. Like, you don't need all of these solutions in the exam, but one of them will be the one that clicks in your mind most easily. Uh, I particularly like that we used, uh, let's have a look at method two, sorry. Um, no, not method two, it's method one C. This one here, right, I think in many ways is very different, but it uses a lot of the knowledge um, that you got before, and it's very unlike the other solutions because um, you don't employ very much geometric reasoning explicitly. Um, the complex numbers and the arithmetic there kind of do the work for you, and that's one of the attractions of complex numbers.